Coronavirus, facts, not fear, starts now. Good evening, I'm Mike Montecalvo from WPRI 12 in Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you very much for joining us. As China appears to have turned a corner in its battle against COVID-19, cases in the United States continue to rise. According to the CDC, there are now more than 10,400 cases of COVID-19 and 150 deaths in the United States. Meanwhile, the Chinese government says for the second straight day, there have been no new cases of coronavirus in Wuhan, which is the city where the outbreak began. Now, the same cannot be said for Italy. That country's death toll has overtaken China's by more than 3,400. The ripple effects the pandemic has had on the U.S. economy are staggering, with new claims for unemployment benefits soaring to 70,000. That's the highest in two years. However, Wall Street ended the day in the green, up 188 points from the day before. But as the virus spread, the NBA is shuttering more facilities as more teams face possible tests. Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics is the latest player to test positive for COVID-19. In the meantime, Republican senators are unveiling their phase three bill to address the economic crisis unfolding because of coronavirus. Report of Morgan Wright has that part of the story now from Washington, D.C. We need to go big uh, to win the war against uh, this virus. Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen says the next federal financial aid package must be targeted and deployed right away. A trillion dollars um, at least, it may need to be more than that. We are in an unprecedented crisis. It will take historic commitment in the trillions of dollars. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal says whatever the amount is, it must support the backbone of the nation. It has to put cash into the pockets of small businesses and individual families and workers. The administration is proposing a trillion dollar economic relief package to provide individual payouts to Americans, protect the airline industry, and support small businesses. Pennsylvania Senator Patrick Toomey says the legislation needs to help prevent unemployment. We got to make sure there are jobs to go back to. But Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy cautions the administration must focus more attention on the health crisis. No matter how big a stimulus check you get to people, if you don't get serious about the health care crisis, which this administration still isn't serious about, then you are not going to address the root problem. Murphy says we need more tests and support for hospitals. Right now, no economic help will work if we don't stop the virus. And Senate leaders say the latest relief package won't be the last coronavirus legislation they pursue. Reporting in Washington, I'm Morgan Wright. And as we're looking at the numbers across the country, we're finding out in L.A. County right now they've implemented safer at home for the amount of COVID-19 cases that are taking place to there. We're going to get an update from L.A. in just a minute. As COVID-19 continues to spread, there is some promising news tonight about possible treatments. While a vaccine is still months away, President Trump said the drug chloroquine is showing to be a possible treatment. The drug already has FDA approval to treat malaria and an arthritis condition. Doctors in China, the United States and other countries have used the drug experimentally in COVID-19 patients, but there's not yet sufficient clinical evidence that this is effective in humans. The FDA says it will be conducting trials to find out. And let's head to South now to North Carolina, where today Governor Roy Cooper announced that the state's first community spread case. Angela Taylor from CBS 17 joins us now live from Raleigh. How does today's developments, Angela, change how the state will deal with the crisis? Well, Mike, you're right. So the big news out of North Carolina today was that Governor Cooper announced our first community spread case. That means that this person did not travel outside of the country and this person has not come in contact with anyone that has COVID-19. Because of this, Governor Cooper believes that schools will probably stay out longer. Right now, our students in elementary, middle, and high school are out of class for at least two weeks. He's thinking that maybe that will be extended. And of course, this is already impacting our local universities. NC State is now online only, and Duke University has actually postponed their graduation date. So we'll see what happens. Mike? to where the governor announcing that schools will be closed two weeks uh, starting next week. At this point, how many people have been tested down your way? 
Okay, so state officials tell us that 20, at least 2,500 people have been tested, but you have to remember here in North Carolina, it's not just the state testing. We have UNC Medical Center, Chapel Hill, and Duke University doing drive-through testing, and we also have the private company LabCorp who is doing testing, and so those numbers have not come in yet. But with the increase of testing that we're having, we now have new COVID numbers. Uh, right now, North Carolina has a 114 cases. Most of those are in Wake and Durham counties. Mike? Popular places that typically see a lot of visitors have taken some extreme precautions, including beaches. What can you tell us about that? Well, of course, North Carolina, very popular for our beaches here in Dare County, taking extreme measures, actually putting up roadblocks so people can no longer visit their beaches. In fact, if you live there, you have to show documentation that uh, you either work there or you live there. Um, it may be worth noting uh, this area that's now blocked off has no cases of COVID-19 as of yet. Now, there are still a few beaches in North Carolina that are open. Officials are voluntarily are asking people to voluntarily leave. So we'll see what happens. Mike. Angela Taylor, thank you very much. Now here in New England, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker just activated the state's National Guard in response to the virus. And in Rhode Island, state officials are looking for large facilities. They want a backup plan in the event there is a sudden influx of COVID-19 patients. Target 12 has learned the Rhode Island National Guard toured the Dunkin' Donuts Center, which is the state's biggest concert and sporting venue. The head of the state's convention center told us that Rhode Island emergency management officials wanted to know how many beds they could fit inside the dunk as well as the convention center. Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo held her daily news conference today saying she would not order a shelter in place, saying steps like closing schools and bars are already in place to avoid such an order. Kim Kalunian is in Providence and has more on what the governor had to say. Well, with schools already closed and many businesses also shuttered, the governor did not have any new sweeping mandates to announce. But the big question now is how long is this going to last? The governor says she's taking it day by day. Fear is not our friend. Facts are. Governor Gina Raimondo asking Rhode Islanders to continue to follow guidelines and restrictions aimed at slowing the spread of coronavirus. The most common question that I'm receiving at the moment is, will I order a shelter in place, as you're seeing in other cities and states? And the answer is no. Raimondo says such an order would be totally crushing to the economy and realizes things are difficult enough as they are. She says it won't be like this forever, but the state is working to stay ahead of the virus. Raimondo assuring people Thursday the health of banks and credit unions is good and reminding them that courts are not adjudicating evictions so they cannot be forced to leave their homes. This as 11 new people test positive for COVID-19. The Department of Health will soon start releasing their home counties. There is no no preference of county for this virus. We are receiving it from uh, throughout. Department of Health Director Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott says testing at this time is expedited for high risk patients only. That is hospitalized patients, nursing home residents or other congregate settings and healthcare providers, including EMS. The state asking for donations of swabs used in testing and personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. But I'm making a more official, broad call for businesses and labs and dentists and healthcare professionals in Rhode Island, and I'm asking you to answer that call. And if you have any of that equipment and are looking to help out, you can find instructions on what to do on our website, WPRI.com. Another big question we've been getting is from folks who are awaiting the results of their coronavirus test or who are feeling sick and are hoping to get one of those tests. Today, the director of the Department of Health, Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott, says her advice to those folks is the same message she's been sending to anyone who is feeling sick. If you're able to recover at home, then that is what you should do. In Providence, I'm Kim Kalunian. Eyewitness News. Kim, thank you. Of course, the new normal across the country is distance learning for the nation's students. And John Holt from Fox 4 in Kansas City joins us now live with more on that. John. Yeah, Mike, the big news out of Missouri tonight, all public and charter schools are now closed for at least two weeks. Uh, two weeks. Governor Mike Parson announcing today the state's district took the action on their own. More than half of the districts had already closed. Kansas schools are closed for the rest of the school year as ordered by the governor earlier this week and parents received some guidelines on distance learning today. 
Weddings take months, even years of planning, and canceling those plans can be a devastating decision for couples. That's the reality for couples all over our metro as they work to sort of adjust. And Sharifa Jackson shares how the coronavirus is impacting much more than just school and work. So it's all of our table toppers, our plates, our chargers. Jamie Huddleston and her fiance Robert Kellogg were all set to get married April 4th. But with weeks left, vendors booked and money spent. Their dream wedding is now canceled. We actually planned our whole wedding um, with the idea of family traveling and friends coming here, um, which was kind of the biggest decision factor of us mm -hmm. canceling our wedding early was just for their safety. Jamie says she looked forward to saying I do in front of 180 of their closest family and friends and said they are now planning a small ceremony and only immediate family will be present. Whether it's somewhere, a park, um, but we have our immediate family, so four on her side, four on my side. Um, we're going to get together. They have a new tentative ceremony date set for September. And like brides to be, abrupt and unexpected changes due to coronavirus has become a nightmare for vendors and wedding planners alike. At KC Weddings to Go in Independence, they've had couples postpone and cancel weddings at their venue that holds 60 people all the way up to November. We will do our best to get everyone married that wants to be married during this time. And we, we have bigger weddings that are planned or up in the air, but we will always move the date and time, no charge. We take care of our, our couples. The small business encouraging couples to use their smaller chapel and carry on. We also just had to change our perspective that we, you know, it's a it's minute inconvenience in comparison to what a lot of people are going through these days. Just another way the coronavirus is impacting people, but couples like Jamie and Robert say they are not letting this stop them. Even with all the uncertainty of what's ahead, determined to still say I do. We just remind ourselves to be thankful every day that we have the provisions and the opportunity to still do a wedding. Sharifa Jackson, Fox 4 News. In Jackson County, Missouri, which is the Kansas City Metro, officials are still allowing couples to get marriage licenses, but you're required to set up an appointment first, and you're asked to fill out the necessary paperwork online to reduce contact time. A Kansas City favor joining Chiefs players in the Metro in feeding the hungry. This comes by way of Hollywood. Actor Eric Stone Street, he hails from the Metro. He says he's donating 200,000 meals to Harvester's Food Bank in Kansas City. Stone Street tweeting, Lindsay and I love our hometown and want to help do what we can. I'm only posting to maybe motivate you to do what you can, when you can, if you can, to help vulnerable families in our community during this time. Eric Stone Street from Hollywood by way of Kansas City. That's it from Kansas City tonight. John Holt, back to you in Providence, Mike. All right, thanks, John. And as people hunker down at home, it's having devastating effects on the nation's blood supply. U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams made a special plea today to Gen Xers and millennials. I want America to know that blood donation is safe and blood centers are taking extra precautions at this time based on new CDC recommendations, including spacing beds six feet apart, disinfecting surfaces between patients, temperature checking staff, and encouraging donors to make appointments ahead of time so we can space them out. Social distancing does not have to mean social disengagement. So give blood today. You'll feel good about it, and you'll be helping your country and your community during this crisis. And you might even save a life. Adam said one blunt donation can actually save as many as three lives. In Colorado, health officials in one county are considering ordering quarantines after another death in the state. With more information from the Midwest, let's go live to Matt Morrow from KDVR in Denver. Hi, Matt. I'm Mike, the health department here releasing the latest numbers on the infections in Colorado, one of the hardest hit states in the country. These came out just a few hours ago. 277 confirmed positives tonight. 38 of those people are in the hospital, and as you talked about, four deaths now reported in our state. Late tonight, the state shutting down hair and nail salons, spas, even tattoo parlors. The governor ordering all elective and non-essential surgeries to be suspended. Meanwhile, Colorado, like a lot of places, facing, I guess what you'd call an interesting problem amid this coronavirus toilet paper shortage. Sewer experts say more families are using supposedly flushable wipes. The problem, though, those wipes are wreaking havoc on the sewer systems. Box 31's Kristen Hobart tracked down what you need to know about this. 
The package says flushable, but sewer inspectors say that's misleading because once they go down, they don't break down and instead can cause big backups. Those wipes. They are, they're a big problem. One of Thornton's pump stations shut down last night from this, a clump of flushable wipes. They may stay flushable, they don't biodegrade, they don't break down instantly in water. Amid the coronavirus outbreak, toilet paper strapped residents are flushing wipes, baby wipes, and even paper towel down the toilet. It just doesn't break apart like it should, like toilet paper. Jeff Kostelecki, owner of Drain Brain LLC, is seeing this problem play out firsthand. Heck, we just did one last week where we pulled out four five gallon buckets of wipes. Flushable wipes can also clog up plumbing at your home, leading to a costly visit from a plumber. You as a homeowner are responsible for your sewer lateral and the connection to the city, so you're responsible all the way out to the street. Costalecki says if you use a septic tank, you need to be even more cautious about what you put down. If you're on a septic tank, you should really be using the septic approved uh, toilet paper or single ply. Bottom line, have a conversation with your kids tonight and only flush toilet paper. Everything else should just go in the trash. Kristen Hobrick, Fox 31. All right, Kristen, thank you. A strong warning in these unprecedented times. Mike. Matt, we're hearing the weather's actually becoming an issue out there for you. What can you tell us? It is a huge issue tonight, Mike. Colorado being slammed with a snowstorm as we speak. It's been snowing all day long. And get this, all lodging, hotels, motels, Airbnbs, you name it, in the mountain resorts communities in Summit County have been ordered to close. This happened at noon today. People staying in those rooms have to leave. If they're stuck there, if the interstate shuts down the county tonight, saying they basically have to stay in their cars. Matt, we haven't seen snow here since December in Providence, Rhode Island, so much different from the way you are. All right, thank you, Matt. Now, if there's a silver lining in all of this, it's the price of gas. According to AAA, about a quarter of the country's states are seeing the price per gallon below $2. National average is $2.16, which is the lowest it's been since December of 2016. Experts think the prices will keep going down, with some places seeing prices around a dollar per gallon in the coming months. They say the lack of demand coupled with a price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia are the cause. And if you're not taking this seriously, here's a number for you. California's governor says 56% of the state could have COVID-19 by June. Samantha Cortese and Andy Reesmeyer from KTLA will be joining us from the West Coast. All right, we'll get to them in just a bit. Let's give you some of the best ways to prevent the transmission of coronavirus. We've been telling you about this so many times. Please wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds. If you don't have access to soap and water, alcohol-based hand sanitizer can be used. Cover those coughs and sneezes with the bottom of your elbow and, of course, social distancing. Stay at least six feet away from others. And we'd like to remind you what the symptoms of coronavirus are. Doctors say it's shortness of breath, a dry cough, and high fever. If you're feeling these symptoms and think you have the virus, you should call your primary care doctor or call ahead before showing up to a walk-in clinic or the hospital to give staff time to prepare. Well, in an effort to find some cheer in all of this, people are turning to Christmas and the holiday season. Someday soon. All will be together. Well, one woman in Tennessee put her Christmas lights back up and sang Merry Little Quarantine to the tune of Merry Little Christmas. She's not the only one. It seems to be a growing trend on social media. And that's not all. Hallmark is even running its popular Christmas movies to cheer up people who are stuck in their homes. The goal of our Next Star family is to make sure you continue to get the latest facts on the coronavirus without fear. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow night with stories from across the country. For now, I'm Mike Montecalvo. Thank you for joining us and please stay healthy.